so today what we are going to study is when we do and how do we plan the extraction of first permanent molar in the children yes because of so one indication what i mean to say one indication of doing the extraction of first permanent molar in the mixed dentition you are you are just getting rid of the you are getting rid of a tooth which is which is a cause of pathology in the oral cavity you are just getting a neat and clean occlusion and the tooth which has have a gross caries and why it has uh, it has gross caries the reason being that because of its eruption timing it is erupted when the normally the child are not practicing a very good oral hygiene practices in the start of the treatment so the topic of lectures today is at the gdp level and we are not talking about orthodontic space closure and what so ever all the reasons you have mentioned whatever the reasons you have mentioned so far we are not putting braces not putting braces we are just doing extractions we are just doing extraction and let the adjacent teeth to drift and let the adjacent teeth to accommodate the topic of the lectures today is this when we will do extractions and when we will not do the extractions for example in the coming uh, half an hour i will be discussing certain scenarios and situations where we will not be doing extraction based on other variables so what we are going to study in the next half an hour is this what are the variables that have we have to see as a good general dental practitioner for planning the extraction of first primary molar so what i mean to say because of the poor oral hygiene early eruption of the first permanent molar the pathology of the molar incisor hypoplasia this is very common to see problem in the first primary molar and what we can do and what we can plan we can plan the extraction of this first primary molar and allow the adjacent posterior teeth which is the second permanent molar to come to its position and the situation would be that after few years nobody would be able to tell you that there was a first primary molar and you have not done orthodontic treatment you have not done any orthodontics you have just done the extraction and everything is happening with the driftodontics everything is happening without the braces we are not putting bands we are not putting braces everything is happening with the diprodontics and what is happening we are just doing the extraction and now we are going to study what are the different variables that are relevant for for planning its extractions so look at this case g g g okay okay just hold on this question this is one of the possible complication if we do extraction of first permanent molar more earlier there is a concept of optimal timings which i will tell you in the uh, more in the in the following few minutes there is a concept of the optimal timings for the extraction of first permanent molar if we do extraction before the optimal timings then yes this is a possibility that the five is very low below the roots of the e but when it's come under the roots of the second deciduous molar under the e then it's not going anywhere but when it's below the roots of the e second deciduous molar there yes there's a possibility that it can drift back into the extraction space of first primary molar you see the case over here here you see caries in the first primary molar of all the teeth okay notice the the patient presented in the mixed dentition age group mixed dentition because few of the permanent teeth have been erupted few of the deciduous teeth are there and you have a gross caries in the first primary molar what we have done we have extracted the first primary molar and we expect the adjacent posterior teeth second molar to come to its space please notice the angulation of the lower sevens please consider the root formation and the root developmental status of the uh, lower seven that is at the bifurcation level area and then as a result after few years you see you can see over there because 
the first permamolar have been extracted on a very optimal timing that is the very reason that you see the remaining root development of the second permanent molar is happening on the optimal position and you would be having a very nice contact point between the lower 5 and lower 7 and the third permanent molar will be erupting on the position of the lower 7 that is the logic behind it and you see this is the 7 this is the 8. Okay, and after a few years, see this case, you see this is without the orthodontics. This is without orthodontic treatment and you see the uh, adjacent teeth have been erupted on uh, its right position. The first radiograph that is required is the OPG. Can anyone tell me why OPG is required for treatment planning of this planning of first permanent molar? Can anyone tell me? not second molar, second molar definitely it is not uh, 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 unerupted, second molar uh, the hypodontia is very rare, Dr. Gren will agree with me, we want to see the status of the 8, that is the very reason for doing the OPG radiograph, because 7 to bahut common si baat hai, to bahut rare hai ke, uh, 7 absent ho, definitely aap bilkul sahi baja farma rahi hai ke 6 extraction se pehle hum 7 ko verify karenge ke this is present in the oral cavity but hamara zyada focus jo opg karane ke baad the first thing i would be seeing in the opg ke where is the 8 is the 8 is present or not if the 8 is absent congenitally absent and you are extracting the 6 that's mean ke you would be left with one molar you got the point aap uh, bataiye ga what are different indications of first permanent molar how we will be approaching them we approach and we see different parts of the crown what are different parts of the tooth we see we have the uh, uh, crown part we have the root part and we does have the the uh, we does have the we does have the which part volume periodontium kya teen cheezon ko dekhenge what you will see we see the crown part how much the crown has caries restoration roots developmental status kya hai root mein pathology kya hai root canal ki quality kya hai aur periodontium hai to juvenile aggressive periodontitis ki wajah se ya kisi aur problem ki wajah se the ki hum crown ke different how we plan extraction how we see the tooth of lower prognosis hum uska crown ko dekhte hain ki usme caries kitni hai fillings usme kitni hai uski prognosis kya hai root canal kitni achhi uh, perform ki gayi hai root ke obstruction standard kaise kis tarike ki root canal hai then we see the periodontal condition ke for question involvement involved hai ya nahi hai ye humne dekh liya koi removal of the infections tooth ko dekha fir kisi participant ne bataya tha ki ji first permanent molar ke agar upar if the occlusion is coming on the first permanent molar then we can plan the extraction of the six to help in the correction of the open bite extraction of the six is very helpful for the correction of the open bite as well and today we are conceding the extraction of the six for the removal of the uh, uh, pathological tooth. So now come to the point what are the ideal cases for the driftodontics after the extraction of the first primary molar. First primary molar. The ideal cases is where the aids are present. where the aids are present and how we confirm we confirm the presence of development of the crown part initial part we see the and we confirm the uh, position of the crown part uh, and this is start appearing from the age of 7 to 8 years in the dental and this may come later on but we see the presence of the aid then what we see the root developmental status of seven it should be at the bifurcation area the root developmental status of the seven should be at the bifurcation area why at the bifurcation area because if the roots are completely formed on the position of the second molar if the roots would have been completely formed on the position of the second permanent molar then there will be there will be uh, not a nice driftodontics for the driftodontics for the spontaneous closure of the space of the six this is very important that the seven should be at the bifurcation level otherwise 
if you do extraction late if you do extraction late not in the bifurcation uh, not when the salmon is at the bifurcation status then there is a possibility that the salmon roots will develop and the possible complications would be the salmon will be tipped into the extraction space of 6. The salmon will be measly tipped and the 5 would be distally tipped after its complete eruption and you would be having some mild residual space residual space in between the salmon and this how much the, uh, how much the space would be left this would be depending upon when, what was the root developmental status of the seven and five when you have planned the extraction of the six got it another variable is the angulation of the seven with reference to six if this is the six this is the six and this is the seven so what you need to see what is the angulation and inclination of the 7 and 6 it should be 15 to 30 degree the 7 should be measly inclined 7 should be measly inclined and the angle should be between 15 to 30 degree with the first primary motor this these are the ideal cases for the spontaneous closure of extraction space of first primary motor what I said the root 8 should be present the salmon uh, root should be at the bifurcation level area the mesial angulation of the second permanent molar should be around 15 to 30 degree over the first permanent molar so this is the more favorable if this seven is distally inclined this is not favorable and you would not be expecting after the extraction of six this all the space would have been completely closed without doing the orthodontic closure please be understood that orthodontic space closure is something different and spontaneous space closure without doing any treatment just by doing supervision is something different this is purely within the domain of a general dental practitioner because you just have to do the extraction of six what you have to do you have to have a good command theory because you have to be smart enough what is the ideal case for the extraction of six and what is the ideal time for extraction of six what I said so far we do extraction over here I said th this is we are doing for to remove the pathological tooth from the oral cavity to remove a tooth of the low prognosis okay and so far what I said the root developmental status of the seven should be at the bifurcation level area and there has to be 15 to 30 degree angulation of the uh, seven over the six there is another variable that is very important how much the seven is overlapping over the six I mean to see okay, for example how much the seven is distant is if this is the six and seven is over here then do not expect a spontaneous diphthodontics complete closure of extraction space by the diphthodontics if seven is somehow away from the six do expect complete spontaneous closure of extraction space when the seven is just overlapping you see just overlapping of the uh, seven over the six in the orthopentonogram this is the ideal case what I said what is the ideal case you see presence of eight you see root developmental status at bifurcation area you see the angulation of the seven 15 to 30 degree with the six uh, first permanent molar when you are planning extraction you see the seven is slightly overlapping the crown part of the six this is the ideal case for the for planning the extraction apart from this when you do uh, when you do extraction of lower six please see the uh, adjacent teeth as well for example you are not having the hypodontia of the uh, uh, lower five because you know Dr. Kiran will agree with me that the prevalence of congenitally missing lower fives are up to three percent so uh, lower five what I what I was discussing when you have the OPG what you will be looking you will be looking eight and you will be looking the adjacent for example you would be uh, you have to be very smart 
for planning extraction of lower six because adjacent teeth please confirm from the OPG that adjacent teeth are present five are not congenital missing eight are not congenital missing so what I have said you have to have eight five adjacent teeth present you have to have seven up to the level of the bifurcation every area you have to have 15 to 30 degree angulation you have to have slight overlapping of the seven over the six this is the ideal age when you have this criteria just simply extract lower six and have a sound sleep Mamuna have a sound sleep just extract six you see criteria from OPG have a sound sleep everything the nature will do for you what the nature will do your seven will become six by magic your seven will take the position of six and you do not need to worry about it rest of the occlusion will devel develop automatically what we will be supervising we had done the extraction of the lower six or upper six uh, why I am saying again again lower 6 because this is the issue in the lower 6 in the upper 6 the scenario is completely different because in upper 6 this spontaneous space closure is a piece of cake you do not have to be very uh, very particular about the timing you know the lower first permanent molar you have a denser bone in the mandible and in the maxilla you have a very soft spongy bone the spontaneous space closure is not very much time dependent and you are not very particular about the optimal timing in the upper arch in maxilla because of the porous bone you would be seeing the drifter dontex of the seven into the extraction space of six very comfortably you won't you won't be having issue the issue is in the lower arch where the seven would not be able to close all the space of the six if it if it is extracted late or if the roots are developed more further so that's why I am uh, talking again and again about the six because in the seven the uh, space closure of spontaneous space closure of six by the seven is not a big deal what is the issue you have extracted six there is a term which is called compensatory extraction the compensatory extraction is done to preserve the molar relationship and to prevent from the supra eruption of the opposing teeth for example it's a, it's a simple concept is this if you have one molar occlusion in the one arch and you have two molar in the other arch to avoid supra eruption you have extracted one to have uh, the molars contact with each other you want to have class 1 molar you do extraction of uh, one molar so you would be having a same molar relationship in the upper right you in the in this extraction of uh, first molar in the uh, children you had extracted first permanent molar in the lower arch and the seven would start supra erupting into the space of six what we want we want spontaneous closure of the spontaneous closure of this space the seven is moving forward and this will supra erupt and this will lock the mesial migration of the lower seven the supra erupting upper seven may lock and prevent the mesial migration of the lower seven so what you can do you, can, you will be supervising supervising why we are supervising because there is a possibility that it could be total out of contact I need your concentration now I need your concentration now or there is a possibility that upper six can be in contact with five or any adjacent teeth the position of the six is being determined by the skeletal positions the position of the six is also being developed by the skeletal position you, if you have a very prognathic maxilla you may have upper six contacted with lower five if you have retrognathic maxilla you may be having 
uh, upper six contactic lower seven and what the issue and the problem which I mentioned over here the supra eruption of six and locking the mesial migration of seven this is the issue of class one skeletal relationship that's why you would be licking that's why you would be looking and supervising this if uh, you what you can do you can give any bite plane you can give any removal plans or any functional plans or you can just bond it with the fixed retainer somehow like you can prevent but what if if it is in contact with five or if it is contact in contact with seven then you do not need to plan compensatory extraction the, comp the objective of the compensatory extraction compensatory extraction what is compensatory extraction the extraction of the opposing tooth the extraction of the tooth in the, in the opposing arch the balancing extraction is the extraction in the same arch to preserve the midline in the planning of the first permeable the balancing extraction is out of question balancing mean to balance the midline balancing balancing extraction are done to balance the midlines okay here we do not have issue of the midlines so we do not have uh, why we don't have the issue of the midline because first molar are quite away from the midline so by the extraction of first molar the uh, midline knobbery does not get interfered we do extraction in the balancing if you are having bilateral crowding you have crowding over here you have crowding over here then you can plan extraction but here the, the concept of the balancing extraction okay, if you are planning extraction of the lower six you would be doing extraction of the upper six as well to balance out to prevent the supra eruption of the opposing tooth this is the concept of the balancing extraction yes your question Yes, we can do splint. Yes, if for uh, Memuna, I'm very happy with you. Uh, I'm very happy. If you, you see the aids are congenitally absent, you see the congenitally uh, aids are congenitally absent. You can splint with the fixed retainer. You can give a removal plans. You can just monitor it. Uh, monitor one the partial of the tooth is in contact with the adjacent tooth and it's not supra erupting. Yes, we can do splint. We can do fixed retainers for that. And, if, and we can manage it by one way or other. There are many ways to, to prevent the supra eruption. But here the situation is we are doing and we are planning the extraction of the six without doing orthodontic treatment. This is in the hand of the GDPs. You are doing planning the extraction. If you see a situation like this, the seven is bifurcation level area is slightly covered. You may plan the extraction of the six or carefully monitor. The careful monitoring demands something more. The patient you have to see patient on a very regular basis, on the monthly or bi-monthly basis, to see it is not supra erupting, or the patient is continuously wearing the appliance. Uh, having the practical sense, they do extract the upper six to uh, avoid the load on the national health services. These guidelines are from the Royal College guideline, Royal College guideline England. So they want to prevent the load on the NHS. That's why they avoid filling, root canal, crown, dental implant, they are planning something, a very, very smart approach, they are extracting low six, having the spontaneous space closure of the seven into the extraction of the six, and they do not need any further orthodontic treatment or any fancy treatment in terms of root canal implants and something like this. This is the logic behind it. What you have to do, you have to look very smartly, you have to select and diagnose the optimal case. So far, what we have discussed, we have discussed what is the optimal age? Optimal age is 8 to 10 years. Yes? Yes? Please. Sir, uh, sir I want to ask a question. Sir, what is your name? What is your name? As you said, that uh, if it comes in contact with the 7 or 5, then we will, we won't, uh, uh, we will not expect the Yes, yes, yes. Yes, uh, I am, uh, because if you read the Royal College guideline, I will share the link. If you read the Royal College, they have explained in a very complicated way. They have different protocols for class 2 and class 2 means that when the first primary molar is ahead because whole of the maxilla is anteriorly. When the whole of the maxilla is anteriorly, for example, this is class 2 skeletal relationship and 
your six is here, class two, and lower six is here. Lower six is here, lower seven is here, and this is lower five, upper five, this upper seven. You are extracting lower six, and this upper six is in contact with lower five because of the class two skeletal basis. Then what is the point? Now you tell me the reason of doing compensatory extraction over there. You want to know it. So and even in uh, in some cases where only a partial of the tooth. You see, if you carefully read the Royal College guidelines, the guidelines is the best of the evidence avail available about that topic. But even they they say that the exact evidence about the supra eruption is is not very high level. So what they advised a careful monitoring and they said and if you carefully read they said if do carefully read it they say if the opposing is supra erupting please plan compensatory extractions so far so far we have discussed the early extraction when we should when we should do the extractions early extractions means Early extractions means that it is being done after the eruption of the upper lateral incisor, upper two extraction ke baad ho rahe, and it is being performed around the age of eight to ten years. This is basically what we are discussing: the dental age, the chronological chronological age should be around eight to ten, eight to nine years, and this is before the eruption of. Second molars. This early extraction of six is before the extraction, before the eruption of the sevens. And here in the early extraction, our objective is spontaneous closure, spontaneous space closure. Is everyone with me so far? Everyone is with me. This is clear. Early extraction means that the age of the patient should be around eight to nine years. The dental uh, dental age feature is the root development is set of seven up to bifurcation area, 15 to 30 degree. This is the ideal scenario. 15 to 30 degree mesial inclination, seven slightly overlapping the six, and eight are present. This is the ideal situation. So now we know when to extract. Clear. Clear? Any questions so far? Now we are clear when to extract. Now the question is, is when not to extract in the mixed dentition age group. Now what we are going to study, when you are not supposed to do extraction in the mixed dentition age group and this is called <coughs> late extractions. Now we are going to study the scenario when not to extract first primary molar in the mixed dentition. What could be the possible reason? Any intelligent? Yes, uh, uh, the major concept of late extraction, late extraction, what is the understanding of the late extraction? This is performed in the early mixed dentition, in the early permanent dentition, when the sevens are erupted, sevens are erupted. Late extraction of first permanent molar means that the first primary molar are extracted when the sevens are erupted and you are not going to do extraction of six first primary molar in the mixed dentition. So far what we have studied <coughs> when to extract first primary molar when you have eight present five present root bifurcation area level uh, 1530 angulation and we studied the seven is overlapping. Now what we are studying 
when not to extract kab humne extract nahi karna kab nahi karna if you want to use extraction space of first permanent molar when you want to use the space of first permanent molar please restrict yourself as a gdp you are not going to extract the first permanent molar you are supposed to temporize this tooth you are just make to make this tooth pain free that's it make some temporary arrangement at the age of 9 years or 8 9 when, whenever the patient presents to you why you are not extracting why you are not extracting this first prime molar because you want this space for some reason you may need this space for the correction of the crowding that is why we have to be very smart in doing the mixed dentition analysis the mixed dentition analysis is it is an extremely important topic and uh, i would like to discuss in tomorrow's online class th this uh, topic why because with this information before the uh, before the eruption of all permanent dentition you can use this information for treatment planning if you see by the mixed dentition analysis that the arch is would be having like 10 mm crowding if the arch would be having severe crowding and you are extracting and uh, as a mistake you had extracted six in the mixed dentition in the age of 8 year then what would happen the seven would come on the place of six and you, there would be no space left for you for the correction of the crowding you got my point if you have done extraction if you have done early extraction of first prime molar then the seven will take the place of six and you will not be left with the space for the correction of the crowding if you have crowding if you have crowding just a minute if you have crowding this information is with you from doing the mixed dentition analysis then you will lock the first prime molar you will uh, put some uh, break on the paddle and you will stop doing the extraction of lower six you will hold it up to the eruption of the seven when the seven would have been erupted you will hold the position of seven with the nent supplies with the head gear or whatsoever you will lock the position of the seven then you will do extraction of six and you will relieve all the crowding into the extraction space of six the concept is this this is the six if you do extract this first prime molar early in the early mixed dentition phase then the seven will take the position of the six and all of the space of the six will be taken up by the seven but if you want this space for the correction of the crowding in the anterior segment if you have crowding in the anterior segment and you want this space this crowding to be relieved in the space of the six then what you have to do you have to wait you do not you would not go for the extraction of the six you will hold it and what you will be doing you will be waiting for the eruption of the seven you will be waiting for the eruption of the seven when the seven would have been erupted in the occlusion you would place some nent supplies or head gear or whatsoever you will hold it you will lock it and then you will do the extraction of the six and after the extraction of the six you will relieve and correct all the crowding into the extraction space of the six in a similar way if you want to space this is space for the correction of the overjet if you want to close the space this is space for the correction of the overjet what you can do you will not doing the extraction of the first prime molar as a gdp you will be waiting for the eruption of the seven once the seven would have been erupted you will do the extraction and now you will correct the overjet into the ex extraction space of 6 so what i have told you i have told you when to extract if the third molar are present five are present roots are bifurcation level area 15 to 30 degree angulation the seven is slightly overlapping the six this is when to extract when not to extract when not to extract if you want the space of the first prime molar for for your orthodontic use for the correction of the crowding into the extraction space for the correction of the overjet into this extraction space then you will not doing the extraction so i make it very simple 
फॉर क्लास वन सनेरियो फॉर क्लास टू सनेरियो और फॉर क्लास थ्री सनेरियो वट्स एवर फॉर एनी काइंड ऑफ स्केलेट रिलेशनशिप इफ यू हैव अ माइल्ड क्राउडिंग माइल्ड क्राउडिंग मीन्स यर डैट यू डू नॉट वॉन्ट द एक्सट्रैक्शन स्पेस ऑफ सिक्स फॉर द करेक्शन ऑफ द क्राउडिंग माइल्ड क्राउडिंग मीन लेस दैन फोर एम एम क्राउडिंग दैन जस्ट सिंपली ब्लाइंडली गो फॉर द एक्सट्रैक्शन ऑफ द सिक्स सेवन विल टेक द स्पेस ऑफ द फर्स्ट प्राइम मेमोरम बट इफ फॉर एनी स्केलेट रिलेशनशिप यू वॉन्ट दिस स्पेस फॉर द करेक्शन ऑफ ओवर जेट और फॉर द क्राउडिंग दिस सिचुएशन इज इवन मोर कॉम्प्लिकेटेड इन क्लास टू क्राउडेड केसेस बिकॉज दीज आर टू कंडीशन वेयर वी नीड स्पेस फॉर द करेक्शन ऑफ द क्राउडिंग फॉर द रिलीफ ऑफ द क्राउडिंग फॉर द करेक्शन ऑफ द ओवर जेट एंड इन क्लास टू क्राउडेड केसेस द सिचुएशन इज डबल कॉम्प्लिकेटेड बिकॉज इफ इन अ क्लास टू स्केलेटल बेसिस इन अ मैगजिला यू हैव क्राउडिंग if in the class 2 cases in the maxilla if you have the crowded then this is a maximum anchorage case then the situation is double complicated because now you want the space for the correction of the crowding as well as for the correction of the overjet as well have i made this point clear so far yes sir hum space mein kehna chahiye wese you have to specify that we have to construct the part okay aapne space regainer ki baat ki मैडम योर फर्स्ट परमानेंट मोलर वैन यू हैव टेम्प्रोराइज दिस आपने क्या किया आपने यू हैव जस्ट डन द पल्पैक्टमी यू हैव रिमूव द पल्प एंड यू हैव मेड द टुथ पेन फ्री सो दिस इज द बेस्ट स्पेस मेंटेनर वाई वी आर डिलेइंग द एक्सट्रैक्शन वी आर मेंटेनिंग दिस स्पेस दिस इज एग्जैक्टली लाइक अ स्पेस मेंटेनर This is the natural space meter because the otherwise space meter would have uh, many complications that like a band to band is breaking, cement is breaking, any other uh, plaque, vinjava, any other complication. We are waiting the extraction of the six, and six is acting as a space maintainer over here. Have I made this point clear to you, to everyone? Any question? वट टू यू एक्सपेक्ट द फाइनल रिजल्ट वुड बी स्लाइटली कम्प्रोमाइज वट इज द बेस्ट आउटकम द बेस्ट आउटकम इज द स्पेस ऑफ द सिक्स इज इज कम्प्लीटली क्लोज बाय द सेवन दिस इज द बेस्ट आउटकम बट वट इफ यू आर मिसिंग एनी वन और टू वेरिएबल्स लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल द रूट्स आर मोर फॉर्म्ड the roots are more developed more than the bifurcation area what 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 can you expect you would not be having complete closure of the six or you could have the situation where the seven and the five are measly tipped then you may need some orthodontic just to upright the roots just to have the uh, proper angulation of the roots then the results would be as per your question the answer is then the results would be slightly compromised and how they are compromised they would be left with slight residual space you would be having slight, slight nicking of the alveolar bone nicking of the alveolar bones means the uh, the the bone would not be very well developed you would be having measly inclined low seven that is the possible complication but definitely what is the situation your occlusal plane is measly inclined is is line downward so when the seven would be erupted you always have some measly directed uh, force so the seven after it's coming into the occlusion always have a hit for the mesial migration is everyone clear so erupt kar raha hai ya supra erupt kar raha hai if the opposing teeth is supra erupting to hum us situation mein hum usko rok sakte hain rok kaise sakte hain hum usko bond kar sakte hain agar the side teeth aur uske sath sath hum jo hai जी हम उसको रोक सकते हैं विद रिमूव अप्लाइंस फिक्स अप्लाइंस बाय बॉन्डिंग बाय स्प्रिंट बाय फंक्शनल अप्लाइंस एंड द प्रॉपर वर्ड इज सुपरविजन बिकॉज इफ यू बॉन्ड इट एंड द बॉन्ड ब्रोक आफ्टर नेक्स्ट टेन डेज देन द सिचुएशन विल डिफरेंट आई एम रिपीटिंग द वर्ड इज वी आर सुपरवाइजिंग 
and we are looking for the supra eruption of the opposing tooth. If it the tooth is supra erupting because this is just supra eruption is a disaster. You just have to see the patient again and again that the patient is the tooth is not supra erupting. If the supra eruption is just started, then you have to manage it by some way or other. You can just get it extracted so that uh, the adjacent teeth get erupted into this space. When we do the late extraction, we do the late extraction when we want to use the extraction space of first primary molar. We want to correct the crowding, we want to correct the overjet. That's why we have the different protocol for the class 2, uh, I mean class 3 situation. So and now, yeah. We can use the first molar as a space container by doing the root canal yes. and the colpotomy and relieving the symptoms of the pain. Okay. And that will be remain in the position and it will not be Yes. And being an oral pathologist, you completely know we cannot leave a necrotic tooth, necrotic pulp. What will happen? What will happen? If we leave it, we will not leave it. No, now you have to crown for 2-4 years. It will not be a fracture because you have done a reduction or temporized. We will do something else. The word is temporized. One way or other, pain free it will be done. Because you are not planning this first time or for many years. The so, so for the take home message is this, that if we want the space of six, uh, we if we want to have the space of six, then maintain it as a space maintainer. Now moving on to uh, this. Super. जी फ्रैक्चर कम होने के चांसेस हैं इसके अलावा कस्पल कवरेज का भी कॉन्सेप्ट है जो फ्रैक्चर बचाने के लिए होता है नॉट गेमिंग इंट्रोड्यूस मच डिटेल नाउ वी हैव सर्टेन डिफरेंट प्रोटोकॉल्स फॉर क्लास वन नाउ आई वांट योर इनपुट नाउ आई हैव गिवन यू द कॉन्सेप्ट and this will be very easy for you to explain. If you have a class 1 situation, class 1 situations mean that we do expect the upper and lower 6 are supposed to be opposing each other. Class 1 is skeletal basis. If we have a minimal crowding, minimal crowding means that this gives you a sense that you do not have overjet because of class 1 situation, you do not have overjet, uh, overjet because of class 1 and you have a minimal crowding. Minimal crowding gives you the meaning and concept that you do not you do not need a space of first primary molar. Then what you will do in a class 1 minimal crowding case, kya karenge aap? Early extraction karenge or you would do the late extraction? What you would like to do? Early extraction. Early extraction, Early extraction because you do not need a space for overjet because of the class 1. You do not need space for the crowding. Then you will do early extraction in the around age of 8-9 years and 7 will take the space of situation. If the situation is like you have class 1 situation, you have moderate crowding. Moderate crowding and what if you have the crowding in the buccal segment. Buccal segment crowding means that 5 is lingually erupted, uh, 5, uh, 7 is getting blocked, uh, the posterior teeth are not getting. Well, buccal segment crowding. When you would like to do extraction, early extraction or late extraction, you have buccal segment crowding. Please see it very carefully. You have class 1 situation, moderate crowding, but this moderate crowding is in the posterior segment. 5 is lingering right, blocked, 7 is blocked. What you will do, early or late? How many, how many of you do would say yes, 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 yes. Is everyone is, is, is aligned with this concept? We would do the early extraction, the reason being because this is the crowding is exactly in the extraction, around the extraction space and this buccal segment crowding will be relieved. So will, you will go for the early extraction. What if you have the moderate crowding and this crowding is localized in the labial segment? Be alert. What you will do now? The crowding is in the. What you will do early or late? Okay. How many of you say late extraction? Sir, 
एग्जैक्टली exactly, ताकि हम उसकी क्राउडिंग जो है वो रिलीव कर सकें ये ये कॉन्सेप्ट समझ आया यहाँ पर हमने अर्ली एक्सट्रैक्शन की ताकि हमें एक्सट्रैक्शन की जरूरत ही नहीं थी यहाँ पर हमने अर्ली एक्सट्रैक्शन की क्योंकि सारी क्राउडिंग तो बकल सेगमेंट में थी ऑल द क्राउडिंग वॉज इन द बकल सेगमेंट हेयर वी डू नॉट नीड स्पेस हेयर द क्राउडिंग इज इन द बकल सेगमेंट नाउ द क्राउडिंग इज इन द लेबल सेगमेंट एंड यू हैव अ मॉडरेट क्राउडिंग नाउ यू विल होल्ड द स्पेस ऑफ सिक्स बिकॉज द एक्सट्रैक्शन ऑफ सिक्स विदाउट ऑर्थोडोंटिक्स मीन्स दैट दिस सिक्स इज सो मच अवे फ्रॉम द लेबल सेगमेंट यू विल होल्ड सिक्स अलाउ द अरप्शन ऑफ द सेवन होल्ड द सेवन विद सम एंकरेज अप्लाइंस नैन अप्लाइंस हेड गियर वट्स एवर एंड यूज द स्पेस ऑफ सिक्स फॉर द लेबल सेगमेंट क्राउडिंग Got it? Got it? Yes, sir. Repeat करें आप प्लीज रिपीट दिस फॉर मी इफ यू आई रिपीट आई रिपीट फॉर यू फॉर एवरी वन यू हैव अ क्लास वन सिचुएशन क्लास वन सिचुएशन मीन्स यू यू आर नॉट हैविंग ओवर जेट द अपर टीथ एंड लोअर टीथ यू नॉट हैविंग लॉट ऑफ ओवर जेट अपर लोअर अपर सिक्स एंड लोअर सिक्स आर एक्जैक्टली द सेम पोजिशन इफ यू हैव मिनिमल क्राउडिंग मिनिमल क्राउडिंग मीन्स दैट द क्राउडिंग इज लेस दैन फोर मिलीमीटर क्राउडिंग लेस दैन फोर मिलीमीटर यू डू नॉट नीड स्पेस ऑफ द फर्स्ट फ्रेम एम मोलर जस्ट गो फॉर द अर्ली एक्सफोलिएशन अर्ली एक्सट्रैक्शन सेवन विल टेक द स्पेस ऑफ सिक्स इफ यू हैव द मॉडरेट क्राउडिंग इफ द क्राउडिंग इज इन द बकल सेगमेंट यू विल गो फॉर द अर्ली एक्सट्रैक्शन ऑफ द सिक्स इन द मिक्स ट्रेंटिशन एज ग्रुप सेवन विल टेक द स्पेस ऑफ buckle segment crowding and the buckle segment crowding will be gone but if the crowding is in the labial segment if the crowding is in the labial segment then you will hold six up till the eruption of the seven when the seven would have been erupted you will hold the seven and you will bring the posterior segment back into the space of six and you will correct the labial segment crowding is this clear is this clear Okay. Now we move to the situation of class two. We are ending the lecture in next ten minutes. Don't worry. In the class two, the situation is different. Here, in the end, I will just give the concept of the compensatory and the balancing. In the first permanent molar extraction planning, just forget about the balancing extraction. because it do not have impact the midline we plan compensatory extraction if the posing teeth is supra erupting and you will monitor it and the discussion about the uh, uh, compensatory extraction is closed now you have the class 2 situation what is meant by the class 2 situation now the situation is what do you expect now you would be having overjet in the incisor relationship this is the upper now this is the lower you have this gap in the class 2 scalar relationship and in the posterior segment what is the situation the first molar would be ahead of the lower six is this will is this visible to you ki nazar aa raha hai camera adjust karu is this visible कैमरे के एडजस्टमेंट में ठीक कर ओके सो द सिचुएशन फॉर द क्लास टू इज डिफरेंट इफ नाउ योर ऑब्जेक्टिव इज टू क्लोज दिस स्पेस व्हाट आर डिफरेंट जस्ट फॉरगेट अबाउट दिस टॉपिक होल्ड दिस टॉपिक टेल मी व्हाट आर डिफरेंट वेज टू करेक्ट द ओवरजेक्ट you all have done the final year this is the final year topic the extraction of the upper fours and the distillation yes what else what are different methods to correct the overjet extraction of upper fours extraction of upper six you can use functional appliances you can use functional appliances okay so now if you have the situation of class 
in the mixed transition phase or in the early fermentation phase, your first strategy is functional appliance. Are you with me? Your strategy would be functional appliance. Okay, so with the functional appliance, all the situation is converting into the class one situation because this all over jet, this position of the lower incisor, this position of the lower six will be shifted anteriorly after the use of the functional appliance. So now this class two situation will become class one types of scenario situation. Got it? What if the situation may I just uh, explain in simple words, you have a class two situation and the patient is very nicely wearing the functional appliance, then your issue of the overjet is gone. Your issue of the position of the mole relationship is gone, it will become uh, class one. Do you agree with me? Yes, sir. Situation ye hai ke class two situation hai to aap usme functional appliance denge ya headgear denge headgear denge ya orthopedic ke saath usse one, class one bana rahe kyunki yahan par growth modification to possible hai na aapke paas you have the patient in the mixed dentition so by functional appliance by orthopedic appliance by whatsoever appliance you are converting into the class one your issue of the overjet would be gone and you would have converted this situation into the class one for the class one, we would be using the same situation. For class one, what we have studied, if you have minimal crowding, then you do not space, need space. So I just making it very simple. If you just read the Royal College guideline, they will just make you more confused. I just making it very simple. By the use of the functional plan, this class two will become class one. Your issue of the overjet will be gone. Now you don't need upper six extraction space for the correction of the overjet because the issue of the function, uh, the issue of the overjet has been taken up by the functional appliance. The functional appliance has made the class two into the class one. Have you got this point? So now you have made this class two into class one and now the rest of the protocol would remain the same. If we have minimal crowding for class one, we have talked in detail, you do not need space of the first primary molar, extract it early, moderate crowding, extract it late. If you have moderate crowding in class so I just make it simple with the use of the functional pines you have converted class two into the class one and now the rest of the protocol would remain the same which we have discussed few minutes earlier. Is everyone with me? Is this, is this point clear to everyone? Yes sir. Okay. So the situation is getting more complicated if the patient is not using functional appliance then then you will be left with overjet now you need this space for the correction of overjet got it now if the patient is has has not used the functional appliance then either you will be doing the up extraction of fours or six the classical ways for the overjet reduction and you need this extraction of uh, this space of six and six for the crowding management or for the overjet management. Is this clear to everyone? Is this clear to everyone? Okay. Many kaha what I said. You had class two situation. You had given functional appliance to the patient. With the help of the functional appliance the situation of the class two is becoming class one and the rest of the protocol remain the same for minimal crowding for moderate comfort. So if the patient has not used the functional appliance, if the patient has not used the functional appliance, then you would be left with the overjet. Got it? Because you know the failure rate of the functional appliance is up to 30 to 35 percent. 30% patients are not, not very uh, uh, not very good with the functional appliance. If you have failed with the functional appliance, then you need this space for the overjet correction. Okay, now you have to just make it simple. 
you have class 2 situation in which you have the overjet now you have to manage the overjet one way or other what are the ways to manage the overjet if for any reason for any reason means if this this upper six was supra erupting over here if this upper six was supra erupting over here and you had to extract this six in the early mixed transition phase group then the seven would have taken up the space of the six then you have to extract four for the correction of overjet Did you got the point or making it more complicated? Let's, I just repeat it. For class one situation, if you have minimal crowding, that means you, you do not need space. Extract the six early so that seven take up the space of the uh, six. Rest of the situation is gone. For the moderate crowding, you will wait for the eruption of the sevens. Six will be extracted late. So you can use the extraction space of six. Got it? For class two situation, your first attempt would be to give functional planes. So this functional planes will convert class two into class one, and the rest of the protocol would remain the same. But what if the patient is, has not worn the functional planes, and you are still with the class two relationship? Then you will manage the class two by one way or other. कैसे करते हैं क्लास टू को ये भी डॉक्टर यू विल ट्रीट इट इन डिटेल हाउ यू विल करेक्ट क्लास टू हाउ यू विल करेक्ट दिस ओवरजेट बाय कैमोफ्लाज सो हाउ यू डू कैमोफ्लाज यू मे एक्सट्रैक्ट फोर यू मे एक्सट्रैक्ट सिक्स इफ यू हैव टू एक्सट्रैक्ट दिस सिक्स फॉर फॉर एनी रीजन इफ यू हैव ऑलरेडी एक्सट्रैक्ट सिक्स ऑफ द पोअर प्रोग्नोसिस और इट वॉज सुपरा अरप्टिंग एंड इफ यू हैड टू एक्सट्रैक्ट दिस सिक्स अर्ली नाउ यू हैड टू एक्सट्रैक्ट दिस सिक्स अर्ली बिकॉज इट वॉज सुपरा अरप्टिंग and you had done this extraction as a compensatory extraction then seven would have taken the space then you do not have any choice other than four to correct the overjet but what if you have six then make it make it available for the correction of overjet the concept is very simple if you want the space of six you will hold it that is the message and in the class 3 situation Uh, the concept is very simple in the class 3 the lower incisors are ahead of the upper incisors here you do not want to extract uh, six late because here you do not need to retract the upper label segment so you will wait uh, so you will extract it early so that seven could take up the space got it and in the class 3 situation i am talking about class 3 when the incisors are in the class 3 relationship and in a in a similar way if the lower six you do not want to retract it too much to make it out of the alveolar housing so i i guess this topic is getting very complicated make the message very simpler to you the simple message is this if you need a space for the crowding if you need space for the uh, overjet you will hold the extraction of six up to the early permanent dentition so you will get it extracted when the seven will be out out and erupted into the arch you will hold the seven by one way or other by head gear by lens appliance or whatsoever and then you will use this space for the orthodontic management but what if you want uh, you do not need space of the six and you will predict predict it in the early mixed dentition uh, in the by the mixed dentition analysis then you will extract six and you want a spontaneous space closure of the uh, space of six by the seven just last one point if you have class 2 situation and the patient is not using uh, functional plan i have a price for this for this answer you have class 2 situation and you have the overjet what you want for the A space of six, lower six. Do you need space for the retroclination of the label segment? Any intelligent? In a class two situation, if you have the overjet, this is the upper incisors, this is the lower incisors. Would you like to use the space of lower six? Would you like to use the space of lower six? Yes or no? No. no. Uh, 
Yes, very nice, very nice. The simple logic is this. You have this class 2 relationship, you have the overjet. If you extract lower 6 and you retrocline the lower label segment, the retroclination of the lower label segment will increase the overjet. That's why you would extract early in the lower arch so that the space of the lower 6 would be closed by the spontaneous mesial migration of the lower 7 and the lower label segment would not get retroclined by one way or other. Got it? So the take home message is this, when you will plan extraction of lower 6 early, if the, the roots are at the bifurcation level, 15 to 30 degree angulation, slightly overlapped, lower 7s, 8 are present, 5 are present, go ahead. As a general dentist, you will be extracting the uh, first primary motor, have a sound sleep, the salmon will take up the space. But what if, if we have overjet, if we have mild crowding, if we have a class 2 situation, or if you want to have the space, then hold the 6, temporize it, make it brain free, hold it till the eruption of the salmon, and then extract it. Regarding the balancing and compensatory extraction, making it very simple, if the opposing tooth is supra erupting and hindering, then you will supervise its position and most probably if it is, if it is supra erupting, then you will plan its extraction by one way or other in a class 2, in class 3, in a class 1 and class 2. In the class 3 situation, you do not need to have balancing or compensatory extraction because all the teeth would be in contact even if the poor prognosis. Normally in the class 3 situation, please do refer to the orthodontist specialist because the situation is very complicated. The reason being in the class 3, the growth is uh, going on very late uh, up to the 1780s. Even if you do extraction of the lower 6, you would not be having, uh, even if you do extraction early in the class 3 because of the increased size of the mandible in a class 3 patient, uh, you won't be having a complete space closure. Getting it more complicated for class 3, simple message for you is refer to the specialist. Don't go for the extraction of the, of the first primary molar because uh, expecting the spontaneous space closure because for class 3 situation is very complicated. You do not want the retroclination of the upper label segment. In a similar way, the, you, you cannot have a lot of room for the retroclination of the lower label segment in the class 3 patient. The class 3 patient, one word, refer to the specialist. Because there are so many variables are acting, the mandible is increasing size, the, the, just, just don't go for the, don't plan extraction. And if you have to extract upper 6, then make sure you have corrected the overjet. After the correction of the overjet, extract upper 6 and have the intentions of spontaneous closure in the class 3 situations.